Okay. Uh, so uh, let's let's get going. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask: Do we have any Estonians in the audience? Raise your hand slowly. Okay. Yeah. Good. So um, uh, I'm from Conversion Excel. Mm, maybe you have read this blog. And uh, we do conversion optimization mostly for for bigger international companies, and we help them to get more money out of their traffic. So, as you know, uh, online business is like uh, like a race without a finish line. Uh, if you get the site up, uh, it's it's just a start. You have to keep on working uh, working with it. You have to get more traffic, and you have to optimize it to stay in competition, because. Uh, on, on the moment when you stand still, the other people will catch up and then you will start to lose traffic and conversions and whatnot. So um, how usually are websites improved? Uh, there are too many companies still out there who, who are kind of running from darkness to darkness. They don't measure er er anything. They don't know what are the problems on the site. So uh, like once in a while, usually after a few years, they, they just build a new website. And they, they then kind of hope that this new website will bring them more, more uh, I don't know, more money. And uh, this is a huge problem. Mm. Uh, maybe you know this case from Mark and Spencer. They had a huge, huge budget, a very, m a very talented team of designers and UX uh, uh, specialists to, to work on this new redesign. So. Uh, their goal was to put more interactivity into the site, more they wanted to display the content in a magazine style and use videos and, and very, to make it very modern and nice. So when this website went live, what happened? Their sales fell 8% in three months. And if you think that they are like a 50, uh, 50 billion pounds uh, annual revenue company, uh, then you can calculate it's, it's, it's a huge loss. So um, why usually redesigns backfire? And we, we have seen it uh, many, many times that uh, people invest a lot of money into redesigns. They hire like many agencies and, and uh, hire smart people who know a lot of case studies and they use good case practices, but still they will take a hit. So why is that? So in, in Mark and Spencer case, uh, while they were concentrating on, uh, on making this site very, very modern and nice looking and giving it uh, like a new look, they were creating some more problems actually. Uh, people had hard time to sign in to the site and find the stuff that uh, they really needed. So uh, you can use the same analogy with uh, redesign as, uh, let's say you have a favorite Rimi store in Riga, and it's, uh, it's Saturday morning, you have a huge hangover, and you go there, and you want to get some Riga spasms to kind of get yourself going again, and some bacon. So uh, you go there, and you see that uh, Rimi has totally redesigned the store. It looks beautiful, and, but you don't find the door. The door is around the corner. So you, you kind of go, you, you find a door, you already are a, pissed, a bit pissed off. You go in, and you go kind of know where Riga's Pasam is. So you go there, and there is no Riga's Pasams, there is the Saldayums. So, and you, you're very angry because you, you need that, you know. Uh, maybe not, but, but this is the problem with redesigns. You can put all this, this beauty and new functionality and functions and uh, features into a web page. But uh, you can also mess up a lot of things that really matter to the customers. So a redesign should always solve relevant problems for the customers. Uh, and, and that's why redesign is, is uh, without proper research and uh, uh, if you don't do any A-B testing, it's like flipping a coin. Let's say you, you have a radical redesign, you make like, I don't know, 100 changes on a site, it looks totally different, and maybe like, uh, 20 changes uh, work for you, they, they work for, uh, for your customers, you will earn more money because of those changes, but maybe 80 uh, changes are costing you money. So there is no way to make that sure uh, what is working or what is not working if you do a radical redesign. And this is a huge problem. problem. So what is the other uh, way to go? Like it's, it's to use the process of conversion optimization. 
Uh, it means that you investigate, you map all the problems that you have on your site, you prioritize your problems, you make sure that you will start to improve the site from, from, the, from the spots where the problems are more severe. You A-B test everything. It means that you, you make sure that every change that you make is really bringing you more money and customers, and you repeat this process. Uh, who does that? Like many, many, many uh, very successful companies like, like Amazon. So uh, what do you think, how many A-B tests did Amazon do last year? Any, any guesses? How much? 2,000 per day? 100 a day? Okay, not really. They, they did uh, like 976 A-B tests on, on, on their main site, testing everything. And uh, on, on any, any given moment, uh, about 200 tests are running there, any given moment. So that's why people sometimes tell that, okay, like the site looks a bit different this time. So they, they can kind of figure out what is going on, but Amazon is always tweaking their site. They are kind of building on the strengths to, that they have, and they, they kind of want to take out all the weaknesses. And this testing is actually one of the main, main kind of tasks, main thing that Amazon does on this site. Uh, what do you think, or maybe you know, when Amazon did a radical redesign? Do you know that? Yeah, actually, no one knows. Uh, someone said it was like 1997 or something. It, 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 it looks all, all the same, like, uh, like for decades. Like maybe some minor changes uh, here and there. So they are always testing everything. And always, uh, I, I think this is the main reason why they are always also ahead of their competition. So what should you optimize and, and how to do that? Uh, we have this... Uh, or we use this analogy that the website is like a leaking pocket and it's leaking money. So if you want to keep more money in the pocket, you have to investigate. You have to kind of make, uh, find out where are the leaks so you could block them. Uh, we have worked out this uh, research Excel model and actually this is the first time we we ever present that uh, publicly. So this is the model we use to do conversion research on a site, to map all the problematic areas that there are, and also to learn what is behind those leaks, what causes those problems, because without knowing uh, what, what are the reasons why people are dropping out uh, from, from certain areas, it's very hard to eliminate those leaks. So this model combines qualitative and quantitative data uh, qualitative data is then the user feedback, and the quantitative data is then the analytics. And by co combining that, uh, we can find insights. Insight is like a deeper knowledge about, about uh, the causes, what, what causes the, the problem. So let's, uh, let's take a closer look how to use this model to, so you could also optimize your site. So first of all, you should uh, use your site yourself. Uh, it's very funny. People always think that uh, uh, if they have a site, uh, they, they kind of have seen it after it, it went live. But uh, usually there are some user experience issues or bugs. And uh, you just should go to your site and do the actions that you want uh, your clients to do there. And uh, I think this is the, the main first step that you should do. Uh, then you should go to Google Analytics and run some reports there like conversion per browser and conversion per device. And uh, if you see from those reports that your site is underperforming on a certain browser or a certain device, then probably something is broken there. Then you have to kind of use this device that has the problem and go and check what is the problem to fix it. So some examples. So uh, the conversion per device uh, report uh, as you can see from, he from he here, you, actually you can't, but I will tell you. So uh, uh, from this report, we can see that Safari is, like Safari's conversion rate is, is dramatically, uh, like it's, it's much lower than, than the average. So it means that something is wrong on Safari. Maybe something is broken. So then you have to kind of also click, click on Safari and see 
uh, what kind of versions, browser versions, have the problem. And sometimes uh, there are only certain versions uh, that that are not working. Uh, so, uh, and uh, if you pinpoint that, you can always use those uh, browsers, those versions, to check what is wrong there, to get it fixed. Uh, then the conversion per device, again, very hard to see what is going on the, uh, here. But uh, actually, we saw from uh, from this uh, conversion per device report that uh, uh, on smaller tablets, the checkout uh, screen was broken. All the fields were kind of pushed together, and no one wants to put in their sensitive uh, payment details uh, to a broken page. So there was a huge drop-off. And uh, we saw it from the analytics, and we used this device to, to really see what's, what's the problem there. Uh, uh, and the browser st uh, stack actually is one, one tool you can use to, if you don't have all the devices in your office, it allows you to test uh, sites on all the browsers and all the devices. Um, okay, another thing is the site speed analysis. Uh, there are also many, many uh, tools, Google has one and, uh, uh, to, to use there. So, and the site speed, as you know, is very important, and it's, it's also important for your, for your search engine rankings and so on. And we have seen many times that, uh, and also those tools give you recommendations how to fix those problems. Uh, sometimes people don't compress their pictures. I have seen personally several e-commerce stores where one product picture is like two megabytes. And it looks very nice, but if you open it up on, on 3G or on mobile, or even in a browser, it's, it, it's loading very slowly. And it, it influences the user, user experience and also your, your whatever Google ranking and, uh, and so on. So also one thing to fix and uh, uh, keep an eye on. So, and those, this is what we call the browser money. Like if those are easy fixes that you can kind of find out yourself. You don't have to do any complicated A-B testing here. Just uh, uh, run those reports, uh, use a site with different devices, uh, find the mistakes and correct them. And uh, we have optimized, I don't know, many, many sites and there's always some browser money. This is this easy win you have to kind of collect. And sometimes if, if they're like, your checkup page is not working on a certain uh, device. If you, it's, um, if a lot of people use this device, and you, if you get it fixed, you can uh, get a quite quite big increase right away in, in your conversions or revenue or whatever metric you're uh, using. Using. Uh, okay. So, okay. When when analytics can tell us uh, what is where the site is leaking money where are the problems, then we still need this human evaluation uh, to tell what are the problems. So let's, let's think that uh, this is a website. And uh, from the analytics, we see that uh, there's a huge drop-off. So something causes friction on this page. And no software out there actually can tell us the, what is wrong with this page. Any ideas what is wrong with this page? Yes, it's, it seems that this guy is humping the dog. And it causes a lot of friction. People don't like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's why human evaluation is so important, because your analytics software never tells you what is really wrong with the page. And, but if, if, you, if you do that, if you look, if you try to analyze your, your web page, uh, those, just do it randomly. There are many good uh, like conversion frameworks out there, like uh, the Lift model from uh, Wider Funnel and the model from Webots. And uh, you can use those models to analyze the site, and you have to look at, uh, at certain things, like the value proposition, and uh, is there anything that causes distraction? Uh, is it relevant for the users? Is it clear enough? And so on. So, but, a very important thing is that, uh, okay, you can look at the site, you can map, using those models, you can map areas of interest that, uh, where you think that something is wrong, but you always have to have data to confirm that the problem, problem there is really a problem. Uh, who knows what kind of site is that? You can raise your hand. Okay, yeah, many people. So this is the Craigslist. Uh, in US, people uh, use it to sell their stuff, uh, buy stuff, uh, services, whatever. So if you just want to use 
heuristic analysis to improve this site. Maybe you think that, okay, uh, does it look trustworthy? Uh, not really. Maybe, like, where is the value proposition? Maybe we can add some customer testimonials and, uh, like, kind of let's redesign the site to make it more modern. modern. And if you do only use heuristics, like um, those conversion frameworks to improve a site, you can really kill your business because if you start to look for data uh, to confirm your ideas, then most probably you will see that this site is working very good. People like it. It's very easy to use. It's, it's all clear. It's, it's just pure functionality. So always uh, you can map areas of interest but always find data to confirm that if you think that there is a problem, there really is a problem. Uh, one example, um, this is uh, uh, one of our clients, and uh, they sell software for small business owners. Uh, so th uh, the clients of those uh, businesses could book times, like uh, shared dressers and consultants and so on. So uh, if you start to analyze this uh, page from the heuristic point of view, um, yeah, we see that, okay, there is a good benefit as a value proposition, but it doesn't really tell, like, how does it work? It's, it's not very clear. So I think there is a problem with clarity. And actually, this phone there, it's an interactive area, and uh, there, there is actually a demo of this software, so you can click around there to see how it works. Uh, but, but people don't, it's hard to figure that out. It's, it just looks like a, like a screenshot of the, of the software. So maybe we could add some more benefits, some features to give people a better picture. Uh, how does it work? Maybe you can take this video that explains very well uh, what the product is and uh, take away the phone and add the video there. So those are all like ideas to improve that, like from the heuristic point of view. But uh, do we have data to, to kind of confirm those, those ideas? So yeah, so from the user testing, we, people told if they use the site that it, it is really hard to figure out how this product works. Okay, very good. So, and actually from the click heat map, we saw that no one is using the phone there, this demo. And it's a huge, it takes a huge part away from the, from the homepage, this very, this above the fold area, which is a very kind of uh, expensive kind of real estate on your web page. So yeah, it's, uh, it sounds to be like a very good test hypothesis that we can take the phone away, put the video there, maybe add some more, more benefits. But okay, but is it really a problem? Uh, yes, it's, it seems so because from the analytics we saw that uh, the drop off rate uh, from the home page is uh, like 40, 43%, something like that. So yeah, it, it's not catastrophic, but uh, there is room for improvement. So this is how you can combine the data. You look at the page, you, you use the conversion framework to kind of analyze it, to see, to think how to make it better. And then you look uh, at uh, qualitative data, what the users say, and then you check from the analytics, is it really a problem? So another example, uh, this is the next step in the funnel and people can uh, sign up here and it has two call to actions. Uh, one is for people who already have a Google account, the other one is for people who don't have one. So, but maybe we could also make this page more efficient. Maybe we can take away the second uh, call to action there because People already usually have Google accounts, so maybe we can improve this page also. Maybe just add a small link under this main call to action, okay? If people need to make an account, they can click there. So yeah, it, it can be also a valid test hypothesis. But when we look at analytics, only 7% of people drop off this page. And also from the user tests, we found out that this page is working very well. People have no problem there. So leave that page alone. Don't start to optimize it because there is not really a problem. If you start to optimize something that really isn't a problem, you will create more problems. Uh, so yeah, always make sure that the problem really is a problem. Mm. Okay, another example, this is the pricing page. And uh, I think you really can't see what is going on here, but it's, it's a huge page. 
Like, uh, and if you want to see uh, what is the difference between different packages, you have to scroll all the way down, because from here you can see what is really the difference. And it doesn't have additional call to actions in the bottom of the page. So if you make up your mind, you have to scroll up again to choose the package. So several kind of user experience uh, issues from the heuristic point of view. So, uh, okay, but is that really a problem? And from analytics, we can see that, yeah, it is. From, uh, uh, from this funnel, we see that 93% of people are dropping off on the, uh, from this page. So there is a huge problem. So for sure, like, uh, we can improve that, make it more compact, add more call to actions, and test that. Okay, so let's take a closer look at uh, web analytics. So if you use Google Analytics, this is uh, like a common screen if you log in and what you see. You see, uh, yeah, your average uh, bounce rate, uh, your sessions, it's, it's all, yeah, it's, it's nice to know. But actually, if you haven't set up your Google Analytics, all this data is useless because it's not showing you where your site is leaking money. It's, it's uh, just data. So, so that's why every, this is a much better picture. Uh, yeah, the quality of the picture is crap, but the picture, <laughs> the idea of the picture is, is much better. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a properly set up funnel. From this funnel, you can see what are the pages in your, in your user flow. You can see where they are dropping off. Uh, you can see what pages are working and what are not working. So this, is give, this gives you already insights. Uh, so every time you uh, start to work, every time you start to optimize your site, or before you start to do that, uh, make sure that every business critical action uh, on your web page is tracked. Uh, there are many different uh, Google Analytics or whatever analytics uh, health check lists out there. Just look them up from, from Google. But uh, make sure that everything is tracked because nowadays I know that many e-commerce stores and whatever sites they use one page checkouts. Uh, so uh, all the payment details, uh, the shipping information is all on one page. But for one page, you only see average bounce rate for the whole page. You see like average numbers. So, and, uh, but uh, most of your funnel actually is on that one page. Uh, so you have to use custom events to, uh, to break down this page in, into funnel steps so you could really see that, okay, maybe the shipping information feels there, or this part is it's working well, but maybe the payment part is, is not working well at all. So you could start to optimize it. Without this uh, like health check, without um, implementing those uh, uh, custom events, uh, you, will not, you, will, you will not know that. And yes, of course, uh, analytics is a good way to, to pinpoint easy wins. If you see that something is underperforming, uh, I don't know, you can use many, many reports there, uh, like uh, conversion per resolution, screen resolution, conversion per device, you can look at funnels, and everywhere you see that something is underperforming, it means something can be broken there. So, uh, okay. So let's talk about uh, qualitative data. So analytics can tell us where the site is leaking money. Uh, but uh, you need, you know, your own assessment and you need also user feedback to, to, to find this insight that tells you what is really going on there, why the problem is there so you could eliminate it. Uh, user testing. Uh, I, I think you, you most probably know what it is. Uh, people do business critical tasks on your, on your site and uh, the screen and their comments are recorded. So afterwards you can kind of see what were the problems, doubts, hesitations and so on. So, but make sure that uh, you always test with people who are from your target group. So if you, if you just use people from your office and you sell something for teenagers, maybe, not it's, a good, maybe it's not a good fit. So if you are selling something for pensioners, something for young people, then use pensioners or young people to do the tests. And uh, we also recommend to do five tests. Uh, uh, 
just to make sure that they understand the test protocol. Let's say you have a protocol that find this product and buy it. Or go to the help section and find, uh, find this answer for this uh, question. So uh, if, you, if you make five tests, you can check how, how good is the feedback that you get. It, it happens uh, quite often that people don't understand the task that you give them. So that uh, if you do five, five tests, you can check if the quality of the feedback is any good. You can improve your test protocol and you can run more tests uh, to get more out of this testing. Uh, and yeah, usertesting.com is uh, just one tool you can use. There are also many, many others, uh, others out there. And very important. So let's, let's say this guy wants to buy some uh, new pink speedos for his uh, Sunday swim. And uh, he uses the iPad. And we, we see it a lot that uh, people tell us that, okay, we have done a lot of user testing. It's, and uh, the user experience is great. But uh, then we asked that, okay, but have you done it also on tablet and mobile? And they, they kind of, uh, not really. So do user testing also on tablet and mobile? Because, um, yeah, it, it's mentioned already many times today that more and more people use those devices to purchase products. So make sure that your user experience is also solid on those devices. Uh, mouse tracking. Again, one very good tool to get insights. So you, you can see with mouse tracking uh, where people are clicking. Maybe they are clicking on, on, on some text that uh, should be a link. Maybe there is important information that they, they can't just see. Uh, you can use like also different kinds of heat maps, like the scroll map. You, can, you see how far people scroll. Maybe you have some business critical information below the page, but people will never reach this. Uh, this area, so you can bring it up. So you can find many, many good insights also from, from mouse tracking, as uh, I also showed this uh, example before. And uh, usually, mouse tracking softwares also um, have this um, like feature of uh, user sessions. And, and it's, it's almost like user testing, but without the protocol and uh, without the sound. But you can uh, like bring up a page, and you can see what people were doing there. Where did they click? Or maybe there's a form you want to investigate. You can pull that up and see that what, what causes confusion and uh, why they are dropping off. And again, many, many good tools there out there, like Session Cam and Clicktail and, uh, and Crazy Egg and, and so on. So, surveys. Mm, exit surveys. Maybe, maybe you have seen something like that. If you stay on a page too long, uh, or if you kind of start to leave the website, something will pop up and it will ask you, so like uh, what, who, what holds you back from making a purchase today? Or was there like some information you were looking for or you didn't find? And this is again a very good way to gather user feedback, qualitative feedback. Uh, customer service. It is, it's quite a classical way to get uh, qualitative feedback. Uh, here is a set of questions you can ask. You don't have to write those down because you will get the slides. Um, and you can investigate uh, many, many important things for your business, like uh, why, why, they why did the people choose your store? Why, what were the, like, the tops? What were the hesitations? Why did it buy? And, and so on and so on. So you can get many, many good insights from here also. Uh, some examples. Uh, uh, we did uh, this uh, research for one e-commerce store that sells only inflatable bouncers. Very interesting business. And um, from, from their uh, survey, we found that uh, we asked people, so what was the key thing or what, was the, what mattered for them the most when they were uh, buying this inflatable bouncer, and, and we found out that it was the quality and durability. Not so much the price or the size, it was quality. Yeah, the price also, <laughs> and durability. But this is, a good, this is good information. You can use this information to tweak your value proposition. Maybe you can add some quality assurance, like badge on your product page. There are many things you can kind of, many test hypotheses you can uh, great from this information. So we learned that uh, those clients mostly were elderly people and mostly female. So this is again 
good information, you can give this information you, to your marketing department and tell that, okay, those are the people you are marketing to. Uh, and, uh, and one cool thing we also learned was that um, uh, why did they choose this supplier was because of the uh, quality reviews. So again, a good insight. You can form a test hypothesis to, to put more reviews to the site, like on, on product pages, and maybe also even some testimonials to the home page. It can also work for you. So when we also asked that, okay, would you recommend this product? 98 of the supplier, 98% said that, okay, yeah. Yeah, we were satisfied, we would recommend. So this uh, company actually can use this kind of uh, information to ask for more reviews, maybe give a small incentive and get testimonials and, uh, and use those reviews for the business. Okay, so now we looked at uh, this research Excel model, like uh, different ways to gather data, qualitative data and quantitative data, and how to put this data together to, to form insights. So after you, do, after you gather all this data, usually uh, people have like a list that is, is, I don't know, like five pages. Depends how, how, um, how big is your site. And what to do with this list? So where, where to start? So we, we recommend to allocate each of uh, those issues into different buckets. So all the tests uh, uh, should go all issues where you see that, okay, there is a problem and you already have a good idea how to solve this problem. So all test hypotheses should go under that. So on the instrument, uh, everything that was broken on the site, like, uh, not broken, like uh, was broken in analytics. Maybe you have, have a one-page checkout. You need to track different parts of it. Maybe you offer a free trial and people are clicking on a button to get that and you are not tra tracking that. So all analytics configurations should go under this pocket. Then uh, hypothesize. Like uh, under that, should, uh, you should put issues where you saw that, okay, there is a problem but you don't have like a one good single solution. Let's say you don't have a value proposition on your home page, and this is a, it is a huge problem, you got feedback, and you don't have this one idea what your value proposition should be. So you have to create different value propositions to test that. Uh, under just do it, everything that was broken, that was not working, like quick fixes, and then under investigate, this is kind of the mystery box that you saw that you got some feedback from your clients. They told you that, okay, I, we don't like that and you really can't understand what is going on there. So like, if there are, usually there are like things like that, but don't kind of spend too much time on those issues right away. You still can investigate to find out what was wrong there. Okay, and if you have allocated all the issues, you just have to implement the no-brainers, the fixes, and then uh, you have to test everything else. Uh, and where to start testing? You have to consider two things. You have to think uh, on the ease of implementation and the opportunity score. So the ease of implementation, let's say that uh, you got feedback and you can also see from analytics that your checkout is very bad. But to work out a new checkout, to develop that, to, to get it on your site, it's, it's quite time consuming. And it, it's also, it can be also quite hard to test. So maybe you should all, uh, concentrate on, on different issues, uh, like just adding some, uh, I don't know, more testimonials, value proposition, like uh, make something, uh, yeah, so, something easier to implement. Opportunity score, uh, you always should concentrate on pages where you see that uh, the pages have uh, a huge drop-off and they are high traffic. So you can think that you, you are kind of a store owner and you are refurnishing your store, but you don't have a limited budget. So then you should always invest to, uh, to parts of the store where the footfall is the biggest, where a lot of people go and where the problem is the biggest. So low converting high traffic pages. And if you do take those points into, into consideration, you can then rate those issues. Like maybe you can give like a five point rating and the issues that uh, where you see a huge opportunity for an increase, 
and uh, that those ones and, and those uh, who are also easy to implement should get like five points, uh, not so relevant things, less points, and so on. So if you do this research, uh, if you uh, if you prioritize those issues, uh, then you will have this kind of roadmap to boost your online sales. And this is then a document you can use to kind of plan your activities, plan your A-B tests, uh, whatever stuff is there. So yeah, this is the roadmap. Thank you.